just go through uh, the definitions and the depositories and stuff for the school corporation. And by the way, this is this is a requirement that we do this in January along with reorganization to touch base on all the different financial. <laughs> That was not a requirement. <laughs> Cows loose. Okay. So all of you have received this in the board packet, but just to kind of go through this, um, Board of Finance defined, talked about the fact that state law that the Board of Education appoints a Board of Finance. Uh, the Board of Finance is, designates the public depositories for school funds for two-year period and reviews the investment report. The members of the Board of Finance shall be the Board of Education as per board policy section 114. The president of the Board of Finance is, oh, good job getting that in there for us, Kirk Schwarzkopf. And the secretary of the Board of Finance is Mr. Tim Strasser. The officers elected will hold office until their successors are elected and qualified. And by the way, this on the slide, I have information on the bottom, whether it's information or a little bit of the vote. So there's a motion on there if we have to. This is just an information. Okay, perfect. Okay. Uh, depositories for the corporation funds. Horizon by Bank is our current depository for the corporation funds. Um, cafeteria funds is going to use Security Federal for the physical bank for cash and check deposits, and then Horizon Bank, bank for RevTrack deposits. The reason we are doing this is because we are branch closed here and it's in Florida. So now we are having to send people to Florida to do our daily deposits. So Andrea was real smart and reached out and was like, how else can we do this? So that's why we threw in the Security Federal. Um, I am recommending that we maintain the depositories for this corporation. So we will need a motion. So I need a motion. Um, to approve the depositories for the corporation funds. I move to approve the depository for the corporation's fund as presented. Second. Thank you. Any questions? Just to clarify, so we'll make all of our deposits at Security Federal, and then that those will still be banking though with Verizon. So the cost structure remains. I assume the same as it was when we chose Horizon? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so what's the cost for us for Security Federal then for that? As long as we keep a certain balance, and I don't remember off the top of my head what the, the amount is. It's not a large amount. There's no monthly fee yeah. to okay. have it, and then we'll just transfer what we need over to Horizon um, as we need to for paying bills. But the majority of the money comes through RevTrack. It's just some people do still pay with cash or check. So that she goes to the bank at least three times a week, and it was just taking a lot of her time collecting all the money, driving around, and then having to go to Florida as well. So. Yeah. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed. Investment of public funds, section 814, investment of public funds policy authorizes the corporation's tre treasurer to invest funds to the best benefit of the school corporation. The investments are pursuant to Indiana law. Investment opportunities are extremely limited. Funds are currently with Verizon Bank. This is an informational slide. And Uh, removal of outstanding checks. Outstanding checks that are two years old are generally voided to clear them from the books. Vendors can submit a new claim voucher if the funds are still due. At this time, though, we have no outstanding checks. We do need to vote on this. So I need a motion to approve the removal of uh, outstanding checks, uh, actually two-year-old or older checks, as presented. We all move to approve the removal of outstanding checks as presented. Questions for Ms. Circle? If 
not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Goals for expenditure categories. Indiana <coughs> legislature through the public law 191-2006 requires the governing body of school corporation to establish goals and expenditures that will increase the school corporation's allocations of taxpayer resources directly to student instruction in light of the unique circumstances presented in the school corporation. Delphi Community School Corporation shall maintain or increase the current levels of student instructional support expenditures categories versus overhead operational <coughs> expenditure categories and non-operational expenditure categories as described in the Indiana Code. Delphi Community School Corporation will limit the transfer of funds from the education fund to no more than 15% annual, which we have been under. So I need a motion that we will establish the goals for 2023 uh, with uh, annual of no more than 15% out of the education fund. <coughs> Let me have really established the goals for 2023 as presented. Second. Okay. Any questions at this point? Ms. Circle, is that 15% that from previous years? Or? It's, 50, it's been 15 It's always been 15 yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's your, you're not allowed to move on that. Okay. Any other questions? Comments? All in favor of the motion to establish the goals for 2023, say aye. 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 Opposed? Pass. Okay, here's the fun stuff. This is the, kind of the picture of where we are as a school corporation. Um, the first slide talks about our demographics um, and specifically our free and reduced students, our special education students, and our EL English language. You can see we've been fairly consistent um, across the board from our from way back 2013. <coughs> um, our ADM, this is from the fall. I went ahead, you're supposed to use do that um, and take the data, but if I had data, I put it in here. Um, obviously, the 2023 data for the school year, we have the fall count, which was um, 1,361. As you can see, we've kind of been stagnant. We've dropped since 2013. Um, I was hoping to be a little higher during this fall count. So again, that's, this is an issue that we are concerned about because as we know, this is linked directly to our educational funding. <coughs> is a concern and something we need to watch. Questions in there? Assessed value <coughs> is some very good news. As you see, our assessed value um, on our 1082 form was right around $586,000, which is way up from $518,000. So that's excellent news, which is again why you know, that tax rate, of course, is positively impacted. That include the TIF areas. That's, a, that's our total assessed value with that calculated. Yeah. Okay, our education fund balance. We still have general fund on there, but that is a long time ago. I switched to education fund, so that's our education fund. Um, this is our cash balance. So as you can see, um, this year ending in December is the three million is our cash balance. Um, we are, have been trying our best to get a cash balance in our funds. Um, as you know, we have really worked to tighten up things and really make sure we know our line items. So that is where we are sitting right now. As you can see, we've come a long way and the board has done an excellent job of making sure we get to where we're at right now. So I appreciate all of you for doing that. Um, I know people are going to look at that and go, oh, okay, we've got all this money, but we've got to remember, too, with that cash balance, we've got to plan for emergencies. We also have to realize that we had 
a lot of ESSER money coming in this year that covered over several years that has covered salaries and has covered a lot of different things. So we don't want to go, okay, my gosh, let's spend, 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 when we covered positions with that that helps that cash balance. Um, we've covered, you know, curriculum. We've covered a manufacturing teacher. So I've been trying to make sure we build up that cash balance because that ESSER money is going to go away. And this year with our drop in ADM, we are going to dip slightly into our cash balance to make sure that we keep everybody status quo. Not much, but we are going to dip a little bit. So questions on that? Is that, is that uh, <coughs> January 1 of every year? Is that how that the uh, fund balance is at the end of every year? Or? Um, I looked at December 31st, yeah, because our budget starts over. Okay, okay. So that was, yeah, sorry, it's fine. Okay, so that's year-ending cash. Yeah. Have the superintendents talked amongst yourselves about how much the increase in education funding you might be from the legislature this year? We, I haven't had any meetings yet, but at the end of this month, I have three different days that I have three different meetings. So I have a feeling one of those is a major topic, and one's a legislative review. So if we'll find out, I'll know more at the end of January, which I can update you in February or May. another one that we've been working on trying to make sure that we get our operation fund built up with um, some cash balance because as we know once again we have ESSER money that's 2024 is going to be all spent so we need to make sure that we've got um, that cash balance sitting there and not only that you know it could take a boiler going down and we've got 500,000 that we're going to have to appropriate so we need to make sure that we are fiscally sound for any emergencies. So again, thank you to the board for doing a good job of making sure that we started building up that cash balance over the last couple of years. Any questions on that? Okay, debt service. This is normal. Um, we have had to, we had um, a bond that fell off. Um, and then we're about to have our pension debt fall off as well, which of course we can't spend more than this. So we had to actually take some of our cash reserve. They're not if you have money sitting there to pay these bonds. They're going to make you pay that first. So we'll be paying some of that cash uh, balance for our uh, pension bond that's going to be up in another year. But yeah, that's, that also shows that we've got some spending capacity as well. 2014, you were up there, huh? Any questions on that? Rainy day balance. That's another one. I'm going to be a broken record today about us trying to build up our capacity for our cash balances. Um, we are slowly making our way up on the rainy day balance. I really feel like we should be closer to, you know, 2 million. I'm going to get one point eight-ish, two million again, if something major happens, that we have that balance. Um, I honestly thought we had gotten higher back in 2013, or maybe it was when I was there earlier, but haven't we been higher than that? So this is where we're at um, in our rainy day. Um, this year, you know, with the loss of ADM and, you know, without having um, the uh, vote go our way, um, we will not be able to build up the rainy day as much because we are going to have to use some of the money to cover positions. Okay. Uh, grants, just because I figure you need to know that there's other money coming in, other revenue coming in. Um, I've got, we've got some other grants that we've been working on. Um, that's Andrea and I's favorite thing is doing those reporting pieces. Um, there's a high ability one I'll add on next year. Um, you can go ahead and notice the CARES ESSER right there. Please realize that that is a one-time thing, but that is not going to be forever going on. But the next slide actually gives you detailed money. <coughs> so you that CARES ESSER one, is that the one high bar? 
Yes. Yeah, that's that one spike. Yeah, yeah, that's a big spike in that. Yeah. Um, and some of these grant cycles are really weird. Like the safety grant always runs like it's just finished and we haven't found the money for that. So they're all kind of funky and trying to find, figure out where they are. But kind of notice where Title One's a biggie. That's the one that really does a lot of funding for us. And do notice that it kind of ebb and flows on our funding. And back in 2018, it dropped considerably, which could have been part of the reason why our balances fell, because that pays for a lot of our instruction entities. Did the formula change at that point, or do you recall? I don't know. I hate to say that, because it's you now I was up in my own little world over there, and we don't have Title I money over. We, yeah. yeah, it only usually impacts up through sixth grade. It's just such a big drop from 17, I don't remember the, yeah. the other part of that. So that's where we're at on our grants. And we're continuing to get grants and, and get those because we've got to have a way to settle them on funding. So. Um, the fund balance is percentage of expenditures. And I wanted to make sure that I read specifically so that you know what that means. <laughs> So this indicator is the ability of school corporations to maintain operations in the event of delays and revenue util utilizing existing fund balances to fund operations. So fund balances for this metric include the education fund, the general fund, operating fund, and rainy day fund. So as you can see, um, with all our fund balances starting to increase, that, that also is going to increase our fund balances as a percentage of expenditure. So basically, it's saying we're getting in a more solvent situation if an emergency were to act. What's so. considered optimal? You no, know, I don't. I honestly don't know. I mean, that's a good question. That's good. I'll ask my superintendent what he's. That's really Oh, I think you wanted the percentage. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Probably six months would be my guess. In case the state has a hiccup. Yeah. Then, yeah, you yeah, you definitely want three months. Like, yeah, that, that's the one, hiccup. but I think six months is probably out. Yeah. Or probably wages going up and not funded. Any other questions? Okay, the annual deficit surplus. Wow, <coughs> seems obvious. I still want to make sure that I read to you what the what it says. Um, this indicator provides a comparison of revenue to expenditures on calendar year basis, including whether the school corporation had an operating deficit or surplus for that year. Exceptions can be transfers from one fund to another and adjusting entries for accounting purposes. <coughs> fund balances also include to assist in identifying situations which the school corporation utilizes existing fund balances for fund expenditures. So as you can see, we kind of had a couple of years where um, we were spending more in our surplus <coughs> over there. Um, so we are getting here. And again, when you look, see that $3 million? Remember who got us our money in here at this point. So our surplus money is coming in because we have those grants. So don't be thrown off. That whole COVID money is going to throw everyone off on a lot of this stuff. Plus in 2020, we did the $2 million infusion one, two. Mm -hmm. Yes. <coughs> right. mm -hmm. I think that's funny. Yeah, yeah that would have been it as well when you had the $2 million infusion. Yeah. So if you take that out and you look 1.1 to 1.4, we are increasing, so, which is a good sign. Um, the consideration of conflict of interest disclosure. Indiana law requires public servants that have a say this word for me, pecuniary, 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 there you go, interest in a contract of purchase if the contract of purchase will result in an increase in the income or net worth of the public servant or a dependent of the public servant to disclose any conflict of interest statement. These Documents for the <coughs> public servants will be uploaded into Gateway Online System for the State Board of Accounts. The DOAP website also provides instruction for use and for the location of source of data. 
So, need a motion to approve all of our uh, conflict of interest statements that will uh, be presented to uh, Mr. Circle that any of us may have. So we need a motion that that the conflict of interest that's. I would move to approve the conflict of interest statements as presented. All in favor of approving the conflict of interest statements, say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Um, school Corporation Financial Commission and Information Source and Additional Information. Um, the information for the School Board finance, Financial Condition Report was generated from the Distressed Union Appeal Board, which is the DUAP. And the website is given. Um, I did add some updated things that passed through our state reporting. Let me know. Specific and additional information can be found under the Fiscal Indicator Committee tab, then School Corporation Fiscal Indicators, followed by a data download for all the school corporations. A graphic presentation or portion of the data can be assessed by clicking on the School Corporation's Fiscal Indicator tab. The DUAP website also provides instructions for use and the location of the source of that is an informational slide. I forgot to put that on the bottom. <laughs> okay. Any other questions for we adjourn? Yeah. I'm back to the tell you that <clears throat> it's one of those things that's interesting because I hear a lot of superintendents talk about the fact that it should be record that these kids have <coughs> curriculum that they know that they're registered as, as true homeschoolers but as a, yeah, no. and worse yet <coughs> if they start with us and then they drop to homeschool uh, it counts against us in terms of the percentage of graduation that did not used to be the case until I want to say the first year I went to the high school's principal. Those were waived. They no longer are waived. Right. Any other questions? Comments? Need a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs>